Guys, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about um, some uh, allergies today, but I'm gonna take a temperature first. Hey, my boy, I was told to tell you this morning that that 1.3 is still on the table. Make sure you always uh, ask them all. We'll do a sit down, so just get this B-roll, okay? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. That's the thing, I use no you pressure with my left hand. He's just, oh, this is all just going to be B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, come hold. Come up, hold me, go, bro. Hey, hey, hey. this He's like, nah. I don't know what's about to happen. Be good. Be good. Hey. hey. You see the tip? So, where do allergies come from? For one, I'm gonna simplify this and walk you guys through a journey. Now, I'm out of breath. He was just trying to hold ego and do a little while. Put that thing in his butt so we could check his temperature. And he don't like sitting still when he don't know what's going on. So, allergies. Our dogs are having some issues, including Junior, and it's progressively getting worse. We could attest, or we could throw it up to the, hmm, the environment and all the food and all this other stuff. Whew. But you got, we'll start with atopic allergies. That's itchy skin, itchy ears, and believe it or not, dogs can be allergic to their own humans. Second, this is also a sign that it's atopic. Dog rubs face and carpet, licks top of their paws, not the inside, and scratches armpit right in here. When you see them lick the top versus inside, if they start licking the inside of the paw, normally it's inflammation. Atopic dermatitis, what you'll see, an ego skin, you see those little mites, it looks like, in your dog's skin. You say, huh, we've got an issue. So then that says, hey, there's a sign here that there's a food allergy developing. Why did I take his temperature? Because if it is an allergy and it turns into inflammation, his body normally is going to fight it, so his temperature is going to rise. He was right at 101, and he came right out of the garage. The garage isn't burning up. I think it's hotter in my room than the garage right now. The garage isn't burning up, but he also came right out of there, and his temperature was normal. Normally a dog's temperature is 102.5. He was right at 100.3, which is, he's good. So his body's not fighting anything, which for me, oh my God, we've got it before it like gets progressive. But I'm seeing challenges in his skin, which means there's something going on there and I have to work through it. So if your dog is having allergies, we always personally start with food, but believe it or not, the pollen in the air, get this. You know how at night we get more stuffy at night? Pollen when it's super hot out it rises it goes up there as it, the temperature drops that pollen especially if you're in highly pollinated air it comes down here so now you got the window open if you live in somewhere that's real beautiful and got good weather and you go <sighs> chew. everything's going like you just congested because that pollen didn't normalize and you might not even know you was allergic to pollen mold dust in your house and in this case, make sure you're watching yourself too because human dander is a thing and it's not uncommon for a dog to be allergic to its owner as well. We're not allergic to dog hair. We are allergic to dog dander. So three things I would do because when you go to the vet, they're not telling you these things. They normally, you leave, oh, well, let's just do this. Three things I would do to start. And mind you, in the next few videos, we're gonna be walking you through allergies. You wanna share this with people. You wanna subscribe, especially if you're dealing with these things. I've said this before. The only thing more expensive than buying these dogs is taking care of them. So, 
always take the dog's temperature. The temperature will let you know if it's more of a skin thing or something inflammatory. Inflammatory often will raise the temperature. The vet should be saying, okay, temperature's good, which means it could be food related or dog could just be allergic to grass too. Turn around, we start removing the things that we believe are causing problems. And that's gonna force me to take a very close look at the food and what's being put in it and seeing if there's a big difference if I go, let's say, get food from a meat market versus, we got a Kroger right here. Then you turn around, after you take the temperature, you realize, okay, it really is skin related. Well, it could be as simple as this. You might need to brush your dog three times a week just to keep his skin clean from the dander and all the stuff that they do. Our dogs are outdoors and dirt doing all kinds of stuff. So we've got to keep their skin a little bit. We got to tend to them a little bit more. That's the truth. Brush them down, make sure that they're good. Definitely start bathing them at least twice a month. I really don't do a lot of heavy baths because they're not stinky dogs, but that's also due to good food, in my opinion and experience. Then we turn around. So I'm checking the temperature. We're not fighting some infl inflammation. I'm checking his coat, <clears throat> seeing some mites there. Then I'm gonna turn around and increase the fat content in his food. I gotta be honest with you, even with our supplement that we're using, I'm gonna go back for the next three days and do what? Give him canned sardines. Instead of using the fat blocks just to see if, it, if, the, if the impact of fat matters more if it's from a whole food versus supplementation. From there, if there is a fever, that's over 102.5 where you're at that 103 and some change, I would then water and honestly spinach and potentially some pineapples or green apples for that day and only give them water the next two days and see if the body stops fighting whatever is fighting over a 72 hour time frame and then start working them back into certain proteins and if you feel one protein cause an issue remove that protein whole, all, all together and find a protein that works so again three things i would do take the temperature if the temperature's up something's something's inflamed if there's inflammation means she's getting into a fever if inflammation isn't properly managed the dog could potentially long term lose mobility so if i see inflammation i then what give them three days no food more fruit slash vegetables and let the body correct itself. And then I turn around and I start working things back in while over those three days, brushing the dog, making sure the dog's coat gets clean. I'm cleaning the ears out, etc. Know the difference between wax and yeast as well. And we've shown you that. If not, you'll see this video, me digging in Ego's ears and Tron's ear and you'll see the difference. Okay, that's just wax. But you gotta keep the dog's ears clean as well because they can't clean themselves. Not that part at least. Stay tuned, take care of your dogs. Allergies people are a journey. I wish vets knew more. I know everyone's trying their best to learn and do all they can because this is annoying. You wake up, dog scratching crazy, has missing hair, the dog has scars from itching. You go, this is a problem. Challenge is, is you can keep giving the, the vet three to $600 to solve these problems or get on this medicine and it's just not gonna solve the problem long term. It's just band-aid, band-aid, band-aid. So I'll be walking down a, whew, a long road <laughs> to make sure that we solve this problem. We help you to the best of our abilities. Guys, stay tuned, take care of your dogs. Thank you for watching.